We're going to explain all 11 Blackbeard pirates, their devil fruits, and their crazy backstories, including all four major new abilities the manga just revealed. Like Kuzan, formerly known as Admiral Aokiji, who has just been confirmed as an official member of Blackbeard's crew. This was hinted at by one of the five elders of the world government after Kuzan lost the battle for the fleet admiral position against Akainu. Kuzan wields the powerful Hie Hie no Mi, a Logia fruit that turns its user into true coldness. Aokiji can cool down anything around himself including the ocean itself, turning it into ice, making him the only known devil fruit user who would be immune to falling into the ocean. This, as well as his former admiral status, most likely make him the most powerful subordinate Blackbeard has in his crew at this moment, with ridiculously overpowered devil fruit and hockey abilities. Kuzan's character is inspired by the actor Yasuka Matsuda, especially in his role of detective Shunsaku Kudo, that, if you look at it, is really just an in real life version of Aokiji. His epithet literally means blue pheasant, which is inspired by both his ice powers, but also by the story of Momotaro, which was accompanied by a dog, a monkey, and a pheasant, which also gets you the red dog Akainu and the yellow monkey Kizaru. As for Aokiji's role in the crew of Blackbeard, well, it's really hard to say what his actual position is, as we've literally just found out that he is an official member. However, out of the 10 Titanic captains in Blackbeard's crew, we only know nine of them. So it really wouldn't be too far-fetched, I think, to assume that Kuzan might be the Titanic captain of the 10th ship. But why on earth did a former marine admiral join one of the most evil pirate groups on the planet in the first place? I think it's pretty fair to say that Kuzan is the odd one out in a crew of already fairly odd pirates. Well, he was Luffy's antagonist during the Long Ring Island arc and later on at Marine Fort, Ichiro Oda, the author of One Piece, has made it pretty clear to us that Kuzan was really more of an ally to the crew than anything. He was the one who spared Robin's life after the events on Ohara and was cheering for her to find a place where she belongs. Aokiji's entire arc during the Water 7 and his lobby saga was literally a test for the Straw Hats to see if they could actually be entrusted with Robin's life, as Aokiji explains himself. He sees his idol Garp, Luffy's grandfather, in the Straw Hat captain himself. Himself, and so starts to cheer for him, always finding an excuse to spare their lives. Yes, he freezes Robin and Luffy, but then just leaves. He has a heartwarming chat with Robin after the crew saved her from Ennis Lobby, and makes sure that everyone who helped Luffy infiltrate the island is categorized as simply an innocent bystander. Then he just lies down on his sunbed as Garb lets his grandson escape and smiles at the crew's new ship. And even at Marine Fort, he saves Luffy's life twice. First, jumping in to attack Luffy with a really basic stab attack while Akainu was getting ready to take Luffy out completely, and then later on letting Lost Submarine escape as they treat the heavily wounded Luffy. So overall, Kuzan is presented to us as one of the most powerful marine fighters that then sympathizes with Luffy's journey because Luffy's and his sense of justice overlap. And yet, after all that, after losing the battle with Akainu, he joins none other than Blackbeard, Luffy's polar opposite and the man with no sense of morale and justice whatsoever. The three most likely explanations here are that one, he has truly changed his ways and is looking for revenge on the marines. Two, he is an undercover agent for the marines and his fight with the kind who was just staged to get him into the crew in the first place. Or three, Kuzan is actually working with or for someone else, for example the revolutionaries, to keep an eye on Blackbeard and assure that he doesn't succeed with his mission to rule the world. I personally find it really hard to to believe that Kuzan is not a good guy who will at some point come to help Luffy and the crew and turn on Blackbeard sometime later on in the story. I mean, he might even be the person who reveals the decisive detail of how to bring Teach down in the end. So once the Straw Hats cross paths with the Blackbeard pirates, I don't expect Kuzan to really fight anyone at all, but if anything, switch sides. At number 10, we have Jesus Burgess. Burgess is one of the devil fruits that have just been revealed in the manga, sometime after the events at Rosa, he has eaten the Riki Riki no Mi, a paramecia that grants superhuman strength. Now, this comes in especially handy here because it multiplies Burgess' already superhuman base strength to a level where he's able to easily lift an entire freaking mountain and casually throw it. Ha! <laughs> 
This makes him the physically strongest member in the crew by far. Jesus Burgess is inspired by the classic Mexican wrestler theme, including the mask and all. Thus, when his face is shown for the very first time as unmasked, well, we actually don't quite see it fully because similar to the Mandalorian, it is shameful in luchador culture to be unmasked and having one's true identity revealed. The name Burgess is most likely inspired by the real life pirate Samuel and Josiah Burgess. And Jesus is both a traditional Spanish name, Jesus, but funnily enough, Oda also gave Burgess Christmas Day as his actual birthday in reference to actual Jesus. Now, there's really pretty much nothing that we know yet about Burgess' background, apart from that he was one of the original members of the crew and joined Blackbeard due to his passion for fighting strong opponents. He's the helmsman of the crew and captain of the first ship, suggesting that he might have been Teacher's very first member, but we do not know for sure. Now, while some people have thrown Sanji in as a potential opponent for him, I like to think that as helmsman of the crew, Burgess will fight Jimbei, the helmsman of the Straw Hats. Both of them do have the stature of a wrestler and are practicing martial arts. Number 9 is Shiryu of the Rain, probably my personal favorite in the entire crew. Shiryu has eaten the Suke Suke no Mi, a paramecia type devil fruit that renders its user invisible. This fruit was taken from its previous owner Absalom in the crew's hunt for powerful devil fruits. Its stealth abilities are beyond convenient and give Shiryu a strong tactical advantage over his opponents. Together with his superb swordsman skills, Oda has revealed that Shiryu has become Teach's right hand man and the second strongest member of the crew after his captain. That's uh, this color spread here. Now, since Aokiji was not revealed yet at this point, and because he most likely isn't even an actual member anyways, I don't think we have to break our heads figuring out who of the two is actually more powerful right now. Shiryu doesn't seem to have any obvious inspirations at first glance, however his Japanese name and katana, as well as his epithet of the rain, strongly hint at Shiryu being a former citizen of Wano. That would of course perfectly explain his excellent sword fighting skills that make him the swordsman and captain of the second ship of the Blackbeard Pirates. Before Magellan, Shiryu used to be the head jailer of Impel Down, the government's terrifying prison of death and torture where each of its six levels is modeled after Dante's Inferno. In other words, literally, hell. And yet, somehow, Shiryu was deemed to be too cruel and brutal for a place that already seems to be the most brutal and cruel place in all of One Piece. So, as a result for his methods, he was sentenced to death and thrown into level 6, the secret deepest level where those are being kept whose crimes were too terrible or embarrassing for the government to be made public. During Luffy's breakout, Magellan reluctantly chose to release Shiryu temporarily to help him quench the uprising. Instead, once Shiryu got his hands on his sword, he immediately killed all of his guards and cut off all communications to the outside of the prison, fearing that Magellan might come down to get him. Then later, after Blackbeard and his men were dying from Magellan's poison, Shiryu brought them the antidote and accepted Blackbeard's second invite to join his crew. He then helped them to reach level 6 to pick the strongest inmates for the crew. Shiryu clearly joined for his insane bloodlust and menace. Since the government deprived him of it, well, he now joined Blackbeard that gives him a new opportunity to live out his very worst instincts. And it does seem pretty straightforward then that as a samurai and the second strongest in the crew, Shiryu will of course face Zoro and possibly be his biggest challenge in the story next to Mihawk. Coming in at number 8 is Van Auger, another member whose devil fruit has been freshly revealed. He has eaten the Wapu Wapu no Mi, a paramecia type devil fruit that literally allows teleportation both of himself and of others. This is of course a perfect fit with his sniping abilities. Van Auger has incredible precision and is able to take out moving targets from miles away, which he does does demonstrate on Jaya as he takes out seagulls flying off the coast of the islands. These seagulls have done nothing wrong, why would you? Anyways, the fruit also allows the Blackbeard pirates to quickly change locations or bring a target of theirs close
close to them. And it also allows Von Arger to teleport his victim wherever he wants and then simply shoot them, which is pretty wild. Both his outfit and design, as well as his sniping powers, are inspired by the character Adolphus from Terry Gilliam's film, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Adolphus is one of the Baron's henchmen with perfect eyesight and flawless shooting skills, able to detach an apple from a tree about 900 miles away. So that one checks out, I guess. Van Auger's name is inspired by both the real-life pirate John Auger, as well as the Augers, who were Roman priests that would read the future by interpreting the flight patterns of birds, which fits pretty well with his introduction. He's both the crew sniper and captain of the third ship. Now, we don't actually know anything yet about Van Auger's past, apart from him being the only member from the East Blue, a sea that does seem to produce a lot of high-quality snipers somehow. And of course, the only suitable opponent for him is going to be the straw hat sniper, Usopp. Next, we have number seven, the corrupt king, Alvaro Pizarro. There is pretty much nothing that we know yet about Pizarro's powers, except that he is one of the level six Impel Down prisoners, so he must be pretty damn strong. And he was even confident enough to try and take command from Blackbeard at some point. He does look a lot like some of the beast pirates, including the horns, which could suggest a zone type devil fruit, but there is really no way of saying. Pizarro is inspired by Francisco Pizarro, the Spanish conquistador that conquered Peru and basically single-handedly destroyed the Inca kingdom. Which is very fitting, as Alvaro Pizarro used to be king of a country in the North Blue that then overthrew him for his cruel way of ruling. In the end, however, he's actually gotten his wish granted of becoming a captain, as he now commands the fourth ship of the Blackbeard Pirates. Now, since we know nothing about his powers and fighting style, the most likely matchup I have for him is Sanji, as he does seem to be quite powerful in the hierarchy of the crew. Also, he did used to be a cruel ruler, which, as we know, should create some real PTSD for Sanji and growing up under his terrible father, Judge. Number five is the demon sheriff, Lafitte. Lafitte doesn't have an official devil fruit quite yet, but we have seen him flying with giant white angel-like wings. This could, of course, mean that he is part of one of the winged races, or alternatively, that he's eaten some sort of winged devil fruit. Maybe that of an angel, which would be nice and iconic with his devil slash demon epithet. Lafitte does look quite fragile, but seems to be quite powerful. He's capable of hypnotizing people, which might make Django relevant again at some point in the story, I guess. One, two, Django! And he was also able to invade Marijua completely undetected until he made himself to be known during the Warlord Conference. Lafitte is inspired by the real-life pirate brothers Jean and Pierre Lafitte. He used to be a police officer in the West Blue until he was exiled for his repeated police violence and cruelty there. On top of that, Lafitte is also the original navigator of the Blackbeard Pirates, which does seem to put him up against Nami, which I find an incredibly interesting matchup, especially since Nami Nami also uses illusions to fight her enemies as well. Coming in at number six is the Crescent Moon Hunter, Katarina Devon. The only woman in the top echelon of Blackbeard's crew, really. Devon has eaten the mythical dog dog fruit model nine tailed fox. As a kitsune, she's able to shape shift into other people, arguably making her an advanced version of Bonkre's fruit. Interestingly enough, Devon was once the worst female criminal within the golden age of piracy before she got sent to Impel Down which is fascinating because Big Mom was a thing back then as well. Her name might be inspired by the Spanish conquistador Catalina de Rauso. In early concepts released in the SPSS, Oda planned her originally to be a really cute fox girl as a member of the original Blackbeard Pirates. However, in the end, he decided that Blackbeard's crew should look more authentic, rough, and vulgar, and thus changed her design, turning the cute fox furry theme into a devil fruit, which, you know, eh, too bad. As the only female Titanic captain, it would be very much like Oda to match her up with Robin then. And in a way, their abilities do seem to be quite an interesting matchup here. By the way, quickly, if I hit 700 subs by the end of November, I will make a whole video about Shanks' crew and all the powers that Oda has revealed together with Film Red. So do hit subscribe if you do want to see that. Number four is another Impel Down escapee, the Colossal Bat. 
battleship Sun Juan Wolf. Now this character is fascinating in a lot of ways. For one, he is the largest character in the entire story, barely fitting on an island and usually just seen towering somewhere in the background. I mean dude, look at this thing. He's also the first known giant in the story that has actually eaten a devil fruit. And while we don't exactly know what that devil fruit is, it does seem to make him quite a lot bigger. As giants in One Piece do tend to get very old, with 99 years he is the oldest member of the crew. His name could be based on the Spanish warship, the San Juan Nepomuceno. And somehow he is also one of the 10 Titanic captains, though I really don't know how he would fit on any of the ships. Maybe he can just shrink himself as well after all, or he is the ship. I mean, who knows? We really do know nothing about his powers, but he does look quite powerful. Even if, remember boys and girls, size isn't everything, but it sure leaves an impression if you know what I'm saying. My best matchup for Wolf right now would be Frankie, a character that also has a gigantious robot at his disposal and after leaving from Vegapunk's lab, might very well have upgraded to something even bigger and more impressive than Shogun Frankie that can actually keep up with San Juan Wolf's unfathomable size. Number three is Vasco Shot, and out of a crew of people we know very little about, he is by far the worst. The only two things we really know about this character are that he A, drinks a lot, and B, that he has apparently the longest nose of any other One Piece character. And yeah, that's it. I have high expectations that his powers must be something incredibly powerful and entertaining because I'm a big fan of drunken fist fighting and other unpredictable abilities of that sort. And there does seem to be a pattern here because just like the other level six inmates that Blackbeard has recruited, his name also seems to be based on another Spanish conquistador, Vasco Nunez de Balboa. And shot probably just refers to doing shots. Really the only Straw Hats left without a matchup here is Brooke, so I'm just gonna go with that. Not Chopper, of course, because at number two, we have the God of Death, Doc Q. Doc Q has eaten the Shiku Shiku no Mi, literally the sick sick fruit that allows him to infect his opponents with diseases that apparently he can just come up with himself, including apparently something called turning into a woman sickness, which makes me wonder if Usopp's I can't go to that island sickness might not actually become a relevant and real thing again at some point in the story. A very fitting devil fruit for a character that has been chronically sick his entire life, but also sort of ironic given that he's the crew's official doctor. His pale and sick horse that is fittingly named Stronger has eaten the mythical Pegasus zone fruit, giving him the ability to fly. But now as quirky as this pyramid seem, we all know that they are quite powerful and despite their pitiful appearance, they love tormenting people as we saw with Doc Q giving out explosive apple to random people. The inspiration for his character is twofold. Doc Q fits the description of Death, the fourth horseman from Revelation, also known as the Apocalypse. In the Bible, death is described as a gone figure who rides a sickly and pale horse spreading disease. Very fitting. And of course, there's also the Snow White poisoned apple story on top as well. But interestingly enough, Doc Q also shares a lot of similarities with Dr. Hiruluk, Chopper's mentor and father. They both have a very similar face and hair color, both first appeared on Drum Island, both are criminals, a con man and a pirate, and both have a love for chemicals. While Doc Q infuses apple so that his victims explode, Hiruluk at the end drank a chemical that also made his body explode. As a result, of course, the only acceptable opponent for Doc Q and Stronger is Chopper, who will have to face a dark and twisted version of his mentor and father figure. Which brings us all the way to number one, the Admiral of the Black Pit Pirates, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Marshall D. Teach. As you know, Blackbeard has eaten two devil fruits at this point, the Logia Yami Yami no Mi that gives him the power of darkness and the most powerful Paramecia fruit, the Guda Guda no Mi that allows him to create powerful earthquakes. This makes him possibly the most powerful pirate alive at this point. And we also finally have gotten confirmation that Blackbeard does in fact have hockey as well, something that really wasn't that clear up to this point. As for Blackbeard's past, how he was able to eat those two devil fruits and what his big plan really is, well, I explain all of that in this video right here, so do go watch that next if you're interested.